So could you tell me a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. My name's Chris Warren. I'm a seasonal biologist uh, with the Duck County's Canyonlands Preserve. And I do a number of things throughout the year. Uh, I work on golden cheek warblers during their breeding season. And in the off season, I do um, mainly invasive species removal. And I've been working on this project here at Long Canyon for two years. And we've made a lot of progress, um, particularly with the help of volunteers. And uh, so we've, we've killed, uh, I calculated, around 17 acres of Chinese privet predominantly. That's great. Yeah. Uh, now we're, we're kind of in a mop-up procedure where we have killed quite a bit, but sometimes the herbicide didn't take. Sometimes we broke off part of the plant and didn't kill it entirely. And so we're coming back through and we're removing the smaller things um, to try and wipe it out entirely. That's wonderful. Now could you tell me a little about the Chinese privet? It has sure. the, these waxy leaves and... Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of two species. It's either Ligustrum sinens or Ligustrum kiwi. And it is uh, strongly opposite, meaning that the leaves and the branches are directly across from one another on the branch. As opposed to other plants that are alternate, where you'd see one leaf and then another leaf and another leaf. That's a really good ID trick. Most invasive plants in central Texas are strongly opposite, um, while many of the natives are alternate. Um, it, it shares a lot of characteristics with other invasive plants. It grows very quickly and has a very high reproductive output. So we killed most of the adult plants last year so we don't have many plants to show you what the seeds look like and the fruits, but they, they look a little bit like black currants. They're little purple berries. And they put out so much that um, the seeds fall into the soil and they can remain there for many years. We don't know how long uh, until the right, um, you know, right rainfall, the right sunlight appears and the plants can grow again. So that's again why we're coming back um, and why it's so important. If we were to not come back after last year, it could be just as bad as it was in just a few years. Um, so for ID of this plant, it's a shrub mostly. It's a multi, multi-stemmed shrub. And so it looks like a bunch of small trees growing together. It's pretty typical to have just very long branches without too much lateral branching or other branches coming off the main stem. So you see one here, but by and large it's just one or two. Um, it's got these little white dots on the bark. They're called lenticels. Um, and yeah, that's about it. They've got somewhat waxy leaves, um, kind of a dark green, but not as dark as others around, but it certainly shows up there. Is there anything else? You said breaks very easily. Yes, it's so like a lot of invasive plants, they're successful because they have very inexpensive, meaning it takes very few resources to grow, very inexpensive or cheap growth, which results in they don't put a lot of uh, resources into structural support, so it ends up being very weak. You wouldn't be able to do this to a juniper branch or something like that, or even an oak. Um, so it's very, yeah, it's very weak and cheap. Now you said it has a ton, and being out in the field I saw a ton of native lookalikes. Could mm -hmm. you just list a few of them? I know Texas ash was one of them. Yeah, um, the thing that looks the most like this are some of our native shrubs like uh, elbow bush, which is opposite. It's a native, but it's opposite. Um, but the leaves are very different than this. They're much larger and what's called ovate, or more like an oval. And they're a lighter shade of green. Um, boy, what's another one that looks like? Um, oh, Yopon is another yes. one. Yeah, and Yopon looks a lot like this, similar size leaves, 
but they've got what's called a crenulate edge or so this has if if you look at an individual leaf it's very smooth on the or on the edge yopon has these little dull teeth along the edge that's a uh, very very interesting now one final question you said that it's one of two species mm -hmm. is there an easy way to tell them apart no or? it's actually very difficult and i don't and i said it's one of two because I don't know which one this one is. I'm pretty sure we've got both species on the preserve, and they differ by flower characteristics that are very small. And um, but both are from China. Uh, they're both used in the same way. They both have the same growth, and they're both invasive. So, for our purposes, you don't really need to you tell. Don't need to tell. Yeah. So thank you very much for this interview. It's a great follow-up interview from our last one, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to be on the Vogue County's Canyon Preserve again. Yeah, well, it's great to have you. All right. Here is the large taproot and that very bushy-like appearance and the glossy leaves and the easily breaking stalks, very cheap to resource wise for the plant to make. So we just, we hang it in the tree as a warning to the other invasives to stay away. <laughs>